Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. How are you? I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having a really, really great day. So our girl, Foodie Beauty, her seven-day ban is officially over, and she's uploading videos, and she's going to do a live later. So she re uh, bleh, I can't even talk right now. Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> My tongue just doesn't want to work. Okay, take two. All right, so Foodie put up a video, a very short video entitled Our Old Apartment Story Time: The Real Truth. So everybody I'm sure has heard of or seen the small video clip that Allah uploaded where he was he was being a bit subtle, shady. Yes, uh, I think it's because He's in Kuwait, and maybe he's just trying to be careful of what he says and what he does so he doesn't get in trouble. The video clip, he was uh, showing a certain location and saying that he was looking for anyone who wants a room for rent. But he also showed the inside of Foodie's old apartment that she was in with Sala. He showed the complete inside of the place. Uh, it was a really small place, uh, didn't look like much, but he showed the complete inside of the apartment. Again, that was his way of show throwing very polite, subtle shade. And it's my opinion that he did that because Foodie, you know, she fired some shots at Sala. I'm sorry, not at Sala. I'm, excuse me. At Alla and Mrs. Alla for saying that uh, they were jealous of her and was insulting their way of living. So he was just firing a shot back saying, oh, let's just see the inside of your place since obviously you must be living a lot better than us, right? So he showed the apartment and Foodie decided that now she was gonna do a story time talking about the old place. And I wanted to react to it because I've, I just watched a couple of minutes of this video and my BS meter was going off. And so I want to react to it and give my thoughts, feelings, and opinions. So let me just go ahead, share the screen, because I'm going to call her out on everything. I'm in a mood. I just had my lunch. I had my Starbucks Frappuccino, and I'm putting that Frappuccino to work. Yes, it's going to work. But before we get started, uh, you guys saw the react that I did a few minutes ago and posted before lunch. I just want to throw this at Foodie again. So here's my cat, Foodie. This is Booger. She's a very well-loved, well-taken-care-of, spoiled, rotten brat, and I love her. She's a rascal. At nine years old, she's still a rascal. In cat years, she would be middle-aged, but she still acts like a kitten, you know? Sometimes you can have a 20-year-old cat, and they still act like a kitten, but Booger... You know, even though she's nine, she acts like a big old baby, and I treat her like one. So that's my girl. Here's something else, Foodie. This is a much older picture of myself and Booger. Here's the Booger. That's when I first got her. That was like the first or second day that I got her. And her laying on my chest, that's something that hasn't changed. You know, even to this day, she wants me to hold her and to hold her like a big old baby. You know, curl up in my arms. But that whole deal of her laying on my chest, she started that like the first or second day that I had her and it's been going on ever since. So, you know, you over there saying that pets don't have a soul, that they're different than people, wrong. All living things have a soul. All living things feel emotions. They have feelings. You know, pets can be very much bonded to their owners as much as the owners are to the pets. So there's my kid. There's my girl. Look at her. She's so cute. Her being, her, this little girl, because of her being such a rascal, that's how she got her name, Booger. Okay. So enough with that. Let's go on to the video. I just want to point that out to you, foodie. How much pets can love you and how much you can love a pet. They, you, they can love you so much, you can love them so much, that there is such a special bond. And it's such a shame that you have a loving animal in your house, but you are so hateful to her. You're so hateful. 
you're hateful because you're all about spiting everybody spiting complete strangers that you will never meet that never talk to is more important to you than caring for that which cares for you but and enough with that i'll get off my soapbox let's get on to this video because like i said i'm i'm in a mood i'm in a mood to call foodie out on everything i'm just in that mood y'all so let's do this and we're back to the old school foodie intro so i'm getting a sense already that foodie she is just looking for anything to get people back to her corner although the reason why people left her corner in the first place is because of things that she herself has done and things that she said it's not the reactors or the reaction community that's taking her audience away from her she's destroying herself and she's destroying her own community of people that support her by constantly lying to them manipulating them bullying them she's doing it to herself the reaction community is not the reason why she's losing money and losing viewers it has to do with her own arrogant rude selfish behavior and people after a while they just get tired of it and they leave and they go elsewhere but let's keep going hello foodie beauties <laughs> oh my gosh i've been waiting for 15 minutes straight for kids to stop screaming in the hallway just to record this oh but foodie foodie didn't you express how much you wanted to be a mother didn't you go on and on and on about wanting a family yeah you did so here you are saying oh my goodness i've been waiting for the kids outside to stop stop screaming just with that statement alone i don't think you'd be a good parent because parenting requires patience and if you have children you're going to have to deal with things that might make you uncomfortable might be an inconvenience parenting requires patience and understanding and the kids outside just them being outside you're already irritated can you imagine if you had children and they were inside just wanting to play as children do and children are very energetic you know they've got energy for days can you imagine how you would feel and how you would react to children or a child wanting to run around inside and play with their toys oof you, you would lose your temper that's another thing you have confessed you have anger problems you've got a bad temper you've said that so trying to be a good parent when you've got a bad temper mm, no not a good mix all right hi welcome back welcome back i feel like i've been gone forever i know i said i was on a youtube band but the reality is is that i have a huge set and i didn't want to come on camera <laughs> i'm just kidding so no 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 you were on a youtube band youtube smacked you on the bottom and sent you to the timeout corner for seven days and you try to get around the band by uploading a video to the couple's channel, which is a big no-no. And you realized that and you took it down. Because if had you left it up, that would have meant that your main channel, the Foodie Beauty channel, probably would have gotten taken down because you were trying to circumvent the rules. And that's why you went on Twitch. Because you're like, oh, I can't be on YouTube, so I'll just go on Twitch. And can I just say, Foodie, as someone that I've been reacting to you, and I'm also a gamer, nothing made me happier than watching you on Twitch and all of the people on Twitch, all of the Twitch trolls roast you like the giant soft marshmallow that you are. Girl, they roasted you on an open fire. And no matter what you try to do to block them, changing from subscriber mode to members mode and back again you just couldn't get rid of the trolls it was glorious it was absolutely glorious i play world of warcraft and watching you with the trolls it was very reminiscent 
of me being in World of Warcraft and a bunch of people getting together to go into a raid and doing DPS damage on the raid boss and you were the raid boss. Shame there was no epic loot drops. <laughs> but that's what it felt like. So today's subject is actually something I've been wanting to talk about sort of since I got here. I feel like people have already talked about this ad nauseum. Oh, there's that word again, ad nauseum. Foodie, will you please stop using that word? You trying to use big words, it just doesn't work. You're not playing Scrabble. You don't have to use the big words, especially words you don't normally use. It looks very phony. But maybe you should hear it from me. Our old apartment. Our old apartment is also one of my favorite songs from the Bare Naked Ladies. But anyways, I digress. So anyway, also, I just want to say I hope you're all doing well. And I really did miss you guys. And I'm so glad to be back. But I feel like I'm just going to be trying to pump out content as much as I can. Of course you are because you've been gone from YouTube and every day that you're gone from YouTube, you're missing out on money. And this is your sole source of income is YouTube. It wasn't that you were missing talking to people, foodie, because we know you don't talk for free. You're all about making money. YouTube is your only source of income. So you depend on YouTube to give you that bag, right? To make that paycheck. So you being off YouTube, you missing people has nothing to do with the actual people you talk to and missing the communication and missing the rapport. It has to do with every day that I'm not on YouTube, I'm not making my money. But you know what? If you're not making money on YouTube, if you get a seven day ban or a two week ban or whatever ban it may be, whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? It's you. Because you have a tendency to run your big mouth and say things you know you shouldn't say, things that would get you in trouble. And then when you get in, you would get in trouble. If you get a seven day ban, it's your fault. You can't blame the reaction channels. You can't blame the audience. It's you. You're the reason why it happened. And of course, I will be resuming my live streams, so we will get back to beezing. Boo! I just had to throw that in. Resuming the live streams. Boo! I don't miss those. Pronto. All right, so our old apartment. Mm. I'm going to do a little story time, basically. Are you going to make up some more lies? Okay. So we used to live around Salmia in Kuwait. So the apartment that you're seeing circulating online before we lived here was Sala's apartment and I stayed there after we were married. But you're not married. You know, this, my lie meter is going off the chart right now. You're not married. You're so not married to the point where you got on a live stream and you were talking about, oh, to get married, we had to use this loophole and that loophole. Why do you have to use loopholes to get married? I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. If everything is above board and legal, why do you need to search for loopholes? If you're searching for loopholes, that means A, something's not right. And B, what you're trying to do is illegal. It's illegal. I will show you some pictures behind the scenes. That we and it's fun. You know what? I hate to interrupt. I'm sorry that I keep stopping so much, y'all. But it's funny that it was only after Allah released the video of the apartment that now she's coming forward and doing this story time. And, oh, let's talk about being in the old apartment. The timing is very suspicious. It's very suspicious. This story time video wouldn't have happened except that Allah released the video. And all that all Allah did was just show the inside of an empty apartment. That's it. She didn't have to do a story time video. But of course, this is foodie. And she's looking for content. She's looking for any reason to make a live or a video. They have not shown anyone. So they are kind of private. So why are you showing them? I know that because I've 
basically clammed up and used to come from a place that was very open. Liar. Okay. You know what? You're right. You're right, foodie. You come from a place of very open, but the open place you're talking about is a place of open lies, not open truth. Hence the reason why you're always getting in trouble. You put yourself in a tight corner and then you do something and try to get out of that corner. You take one step out of that corner, but then you do other things to make you go 20 steps back. So you're never really out of the corner that you put yourself in. You're very good at pivoting and just slightly getting out of the corner, but then you screw up and then you get put all the way back. And I was very transparent with my audience to needing a bit more privacy, actually a lot more privacy. You know what the funny part is with Foodie and her privacy? She's only private with things that revolve around the truth. Isn't it weird? Like this woman is very open with her lies and she's very open with lying and making up things and scripting things. But when it comes to the truth, suddenly she's private. Let's keep that part private. Shouldn't be kind of in reverse because truth is, there's nothing shameful about truth. There's nothing shameful about it. There's no reason to hide the truth, but yet that's what she does. She, she, that she doesn't want to tell the truth about anything. She lies when she doesn't have to lie. It's ridiculous. Then most people are used to that opened up the opportunity for all kinds of wild speculation to happen. Yeah. Well, that tends to happen when you don't tell the truth, when you're very open with a whole plot line of lies, but then you hide the truth. So if you are someone on your channel and this is your story and you're leaving holes in your story that people are just trying to fill in and you're saying things that don't make sense, what can people do except speculate? If you don't like speculation, foodie, if that bothers you, here's a very simple solution. Stop lying and tell the truth. You don't have to have to tell us every single thing about your life. You don't have to reveal everything that's personal and private, but for God's sakes, woman, stop lying. That's where the speculation comes from. And I'm really trying hard not to address rumors and negativity because it just keeps going and going. And I realized that if I learned anything, being forced to take a week off. Has okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Being forced to take a week off. It, the language that she's using, being forced to take a week off. Nobody forced you. YouTube did not force you. It wasn't like you were on your channel doing nothing wrong. And then they just said, nope, no more live streams, no more live streams for you for, for no random reason. No, you've been on YouTube for what, four or five years. You know, the rules, you know, the, the terms of service, you know, what those rules are. You chose to break the rules. You chose to run your mouth. And although you have been running around feral saying to yourself, I'm untouchable. YouTube will never punish me. Sometimes they get a wild hair and they will punish you, but nobody forced you to take a week off. Had you obeyed the TOS like the rest of us do, you wouldn't have to worry about things like that. And you wouldn't have to take a seven day hiatus of your own making. Has made me reflect a lot. So I'm actually thankful for that. And I'd say, no, you're not, no, you're not. Because even though you couldn't go on YouTube, you went straight to Twitch, booty. Once the light bulb went off in your head and you're like, oh, I have a Twitch account. What did you do on Twitch, booty? What did you do? You went on Twitch and you were just as hateful and mean and nasty as you've been on YouTube. 
So the seven day vacation, hiatus, whatever you want to call it, you weren't a different person on Twitch. You're the same old foodie. You've been there in Kuwait for two or three months. Nothing has changed. Nothing. And the changes that have occurred are not good ones. You're still the mean, nasty, evil, feral soul that you always have been. Uh, maybe you've gained a little bit more weight. But you're still the same person. During your ban, you went on Twitch and you acted exactly the same. No different. So all this talk of, I've done some self-reflecting. I'm a changed person. I just want to be more positive. It's a bunch of BS. Maybe what you really mean when you say positive vibes is translation. In Foodieverse, the translation of that is, oh, I don't want any criticism. So I'm going to get rid of any comments that are critical of people criticizing me. I'm going to get rid of all the bad comments. I'm going to block anybody that has an opposing opinion. And that's something that the old foodie did. So again, you have not changed. That it just negativity just breeds negativity. And it's no matter what I say or explain away, it's just falling on deaf ears. <laughs> so I'm just going to save myself the mental anguish and just live my life. That hey, you know what? I've got a very helpful tip for you, foodie, about the mental anguish that you speak of. You claim that you're in a place where you don't want mental anguish, right? And you're trying to be more positive. You said that. You just said that. So here's a tip for not causing yourself any mental anguish and trying to stay in a positive place. Stop going into other people's chats with little sock accounts and saying nasty comments. Stop going into other people's comment sections and leaving nasty comments under those sock accounts because you're not as smart as you think you are. Because the things that you say reveal that you're right there, that that is you. And you know what? I think you want it that way. I think you do the sock accounts, but you purposely say things because people will know it's you because you are a narcissist and narcissists do not like to operate in the shadows. They want the spotlight. They want people to know that they're in the room, that they are there. But that's the tip, Bodhi. If you want to be in a more positive place, stay in your own backyard. Don't wander into other people's backyards thinking you've got a disguise on yourself, using sock accounts, lurking in people's chats, looking for the chance to say something awful. Give that a try. Being said, of course, all are welcome here, but if you're just going to be negative and hateful, I will delete your comments and block you from my channel. You are free to comment. And Honestly, guys, listen, if she blocks you from her channel, don't shed a tear. Don't feel bad. You know, consider that a badge of honor. If she blocks you from her channel, hey, you want to keep up with all the foodie stuff. There are lots of reaction channels. There are lots of reactors. You can easily go to their channels and be part of their chats. And hey, bonus. You don't have to pay five bucks to talk to her. I'm just saying. You want to keep up with foodie? There are other ways to do it. There are other people to talk to. The environment's probably going to be nicer. You're probably going to be more entertained. So if foodie blocks you, it's no big loss. You can still keep up with this feral beast. Just go elsewhere and watch her. Every time she blocks someone on her channel, she's hurting herself. If she blocks a VIB, that's money that she's taken out of her own pocket. She blocks a viewer, that's just one less person that can watch her videos and give her Google AdSense money. You want to keep up with Foodie? Eh, she blocks you. There's other places to go. Not a big deal. Any constructive feedback you like, 
but when it comes to drama and negativity, I'd rather just keep it away from my channel, even if that means axing some hate watching views. I'm hoping that in time I will redeem myself enough that. <laughs> Booty got jokes today. I'm hoping in time I can redeem myself. Oh, really? So how are you going to do that? What are you going to do to redeem yourself? Because, Booty, you have dug yourself a big, deep, dark hole. Huge. How are you going to get out of it? How? You, you might need to build a really, 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 really long ladder. Because that's what you're going to need to get out of it. You have spent the last couple of years being extremely awful. Doing every awful thing known to man. Saying offensive things. Doing offensive things. You dug that hole willingly, eagerly. And knowingly, and you did it for views, you did it for profit, you were raking in that money, you were worshiping at the altar of money, worshiping the almighty dollar, relishing in all the attention. You did that, and you still continue to do that. So how are you going to get out of that hole? What exactly are you going to do to redeem yourself? Because redeeming yourself is a really tall order. You yourself created this awful image of yourself. This awful impression of yourself. And it's an impression that you put upon people for the last few years. So it took you that long to build up that impression of yourself. It's probably going to take even longer to break it down. And that's with a lot of hard work, a lot of honesty, a lot of sincerity, none of this fake phony bullshit of I'm going to change y'all and then turn around and be the same old foodie. That's the only way it's going to happen. If you come at people with honesty versus I got to make up some story arc and I got to put together some lies that. I can make money off of for the next month. No, you got to come at the audience completely different. And that would mean you have to change yourself entirely as a person. And that could only happen if you did honest work on yourself from the inside out. And I don't think you're going to do that because you avoid work of any kind. And if you're not ready to work, you're not ready to change. I will build a more positive audience. Yeah, good luck with All that. All right, so as for this apartment in the Salmia area here in Kuwait, Salah comes from a family home. He lived with his father and his sisters. His mother did pass away, rest in peace, uh, for her soul. And he decided at some point to move away and get some independence on his own. And therefore he found a, I guess he would call it like a bachelor pad. It was all he really needed um, was just a, a small place for him. Can I just put my thoughts in here real quick? I'm someone that I don't really care about where a person, li what person lives. I don't judge a person based on their dwelling, their choice of dwelling for a home. Your home is your home. It, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to walk in somebody's home and say, oh, this place isn't lavish enough, so I'm going to look down on them. I don't have that point of view. Your home is your home. Whether it's a small apartment or a hotel, motel room or a shack, it doesn't matter to me. Your home is your home. I'm not going to judge you based on your home where everybody is giving foodie flack for where Sala lived is because of her own mouth because she talked him up and she told everybody he's got a bunch of money 
He's a successful businessman. He's so successful that I could quit YouTube tomorrow. I could quit my channel. She talked him up. She lied on him. That's why everybody is giving her heat. And that's why everybody is giving him heat. Because she lied. It all goes back to Foodie and her lies. Had she just said to her audience, he's a simple guy. And he lives in a simple way. Nobody would have said a thing. We've all had our struggles. We've all struggled before. I know I have. And that's why I'm not going to judge somebody on where they live because you don't know that person's story. You don't know if they're in transition where they're in a small place. Maybe they've come out of a hard time and that's just where they are at the moment, but they're going to move up later or maybe they're going to stay where they're at. I'm not one to judge somebody on their life and where they live. But Foodie lied about Sala's situation, lied about his money. And so when we all saw the apartment, we're like, wait a minute, what she said and how he lives don't match. See, Foodie, you should have been honest. You should have been honest. But no, everything with you has to be grandiose. It has to be big. It has to be more than itself. <clears throat> Lying gets you in trouble. Lying will always get you in trouble. I can't believe at 38 years old, you haven't figured that out yet. <clears throat> it's so much easier and simpler to tell the truth. Because if you tell the truth, you don't have to worry about remembering what you said and backtracking and using one lie to cover up another lie to cover up another lie. No, you just tell the truth and that's just, it, it, it's, it's simple. When you tell a bunch of lies, you, you got to keep remembering what you said. And you're not very good at that. You're not very good about remembering what you said and the reactors catch you and then you get mad because we catch your inconsistencies. Tell the truth from now on. Self and he was working and living on his own and doing his own thing he was living on his own for about two years and after we were married i stayed with him there and he would send me progress pictures of him preparing the place for me and it's actually really endearing because it will always have good memories for us because this is our first time. So I have a question, Foodie. Look, I, I'm not going to crap all over Sala and anything he's been through, what his money situation is. But here's my question. You said he was fixing up the apartment for the two of you. But yet it's been revealed that you sent Sala $9,000. Maybe you were sending him all that money to prepare for you being there. So you were actually paying for parts of the apartment. You know, you're paying so you could be comfortable while you were there. Him being together alone and he did a lot to prepare the place for me and make it more comfortable for me. As you can see, I'm a very large bodied woman. No kidding. And I, I would never have guessed that. Make no apologies for that. And I'm actually not ashamed of that in any way. Yes, but you are. You're lying again. You are ashamed. You are ashamed because if you weren't ashamed, why do you work so hard to portray yourself as something you're not? Why use an extreme amount of filters, Foodie? Like an extreme amount of filters, not just a little bit of filter. You go to the, you purposely will not use an iPhone just because it doesn't have filters on it. You purposely buy the Samsung phone because it's got the built-in filters. Plus, you're using the Face app, aren't you? Yeah, I have it on my phone. You're using the contour filters on that sucker to give yourself a smaller face to disguise your chins and whatever else. I mean, it is what it is. You're wearing the Abaya to cover up how much weight you've gained versus doing what you should do and started to lose the weight. You know, you're doing everything disguised, getting bigger and bigger and bigger rather than take care of yourself. See, that's the part that makes me the most frustrated with you. Girlfriend, you're making money on YouTube. 
you have an income where if you gave a crap about yourself, you could easily take care of yourself. There's a lots of people in the world that wish they had the time and the money to do more to better themselves, do better their health. You've got those things. You have access to resources. You're not using them. You don't even use your money to take care of your cats, which is inexcusable. Taking care of yourself is one thing. Taking care of things that are connected to you that have no choice but to be there with you, that's just, I'm sorry, no. No. Inexcusable. Wrong. Wrong. I just say that because it's a fact. <clears throat> And if you are also a large woman, you should not be ashamed as well. But you are. I'm sure you're beautiful just the way you are. So he did things for me that just made me feel like he really appreciated my company and was really looking forward to me coming. Sorry, you might hear people in the hall. There's a lot of children. You know, I got a question, Footy. Listen, I've been watching you for a while. And you like to put off the appearances that you're so awesome of a person that there isn't just one man chasing you and pursuing you there are several you guys notice that that when it comes to foodie it isn't just one guy talking to her it's several men that's because she puts all of her worth in how many people are paying attention to her how many people are paying attention to her online on youtube but also when it comes to men the more men that are chasing her in her mind, the more desirable she is, the more womanly she is, the more uh, worth she has. She's wrapping up her worth in the strangers looking at her. But foodie, question. If you were so highly desired and pursued, why is it that you have to pay men to spend time with you? If you were such a femme fatale, why is it that you have to pay men for companionship? I would think that if you are a truly desirable woman, such a highly desirable woman, guys would want to hang out with you for free. How come it's never free? How come it's always paid first? Okay, question, question on the table. If you're desirable, why do you have to pay men to put up with you? Answer? because you're not that desirable. You suck. Your personality sucks. You're selfish. You are self-absorbed. You're narcissistic. You're awful. That's why. That live around <clears throat> there, so. Anyway. So as I was traveling and when I arrived here, he would send me pictures showing me the progress he was making, set up his place to make it more comfortable for me. He did mention that he was thinking of moving to a bigger apartment and that was his plan all along, that whenever he married, he would move into a bigger place. A side note is, no, our place here is not perfect. It's not the most luxurious. It's not luxurious at all. I know there's lack of decoration and everything, but for us it's perfect and we actually have a lot of plans to travel in the future. So there's no point in, for us in investing too much into a place here. Okay, listen, um, everybody's thinking that when she comes back from Kuwait to Canada, she's probably not gonna go back to Kuwait. That it's once she gets on that plane, her and Sala are done. And you have to know that Sala's friends and family are going to be in his ear the moment she gets on that plane, just trying to get him back to who he was before he met Foodie. And I believe that will happen. So her having all this talk about, oh, we're going to travel, we're going to travel. This has to relate to the pets. Foodie, listen, if your head is in that place where you're going all in. You're throwing everything that you have into this character, Foodie Beauty, versus taking care of the person, Chantal Marie, and everything connected to her. I think it's time 
you let go of Sam and BBJ. Honestly, you've said many times that the, everything going on on YouTube is your story. That came out of your own mouth. This is your story. And you mentioned that the people that are involved, they're just basically paid actors to help you create the drama. Natter even said that you went to Natter and you told him, look, if you help me create drama on my channel, I'll give you half my paycheck. And we knew that was going on anyway, that you were giving him money. We knew that you were paying his groceries, paying his phone bill, you gave him an iPad, all of that. You were getting something out of it. You were getting content for over a year. So this is your story, right? Paid actors and all. You throw in everything about your, the character, Foodie Beauty, out there. You've invested nothing into Chantal Marie, who she is, where she's going, what she's interested in. You made the fatal mistake of not keeping the balance there, of being the character for half the time and taking care of the person offline behind the character. So if you want to go travel around with Sala, if you got plans to travel and you no longer care about Chantal Marie and you no longer care about anything connected to her, you want to leave that behind, then do the right thing and give Sam and BBJ to someone who will care. Do you get it? Because I think somewhere in all of it, you got wrapped up in the money, you got wrapped up in the attention, and the person Chantal Marie no longer exists. It's foodie beauty all the time. You are determined to stay on stage and be in the spotlight to the point where you don't wanna turn off the camera. You don't wanna be Chantal. The character has become your identity and that is unhealthy. And I say that as someone that I'm an entertainer. I've entertained people, I've been on stage. And I know from personal experience, you have to transition. You can't be the character all the time. You've got to let it go just to keep your sanity. Otherwise the lines are not there and you lose yourself. You don't know who yourself is. You don't want to be Chantal Marie. Chantal Marie is alone, has no friends. Your life is trashed. Your life is a mess. So to avoid that, to escape that reality, you jumped into the character and you want to stay in character all the time. So if that's the case, let go of that which depends on you and go be the character if that's what you want to do. Here at the moment. It has everything we need, honestly. So we're happy with that. We like no, you're not. the area. We like where we are. We're close to family and stuff like that. So we just really, really enjoy it. Now back to the old place. I will show you some pictures here that Sala has sent me in showing me the preparations uh, as they were happening. He did a very big, deep clean of his place. You know, I still think that Chantal sent him 9K. I think part of that payment was for him showing her around and spending time with her. But I also think part of that 9K went into furnishing this apartment. Nobody can change my mind about that. That she sent him the money so that he can go ahead and get things to furnish the apartment. So when she got there, she would be comfortable. Because Chantal is not that person that she knows how to rough it. She wants her comforts of home. And if he can't provide, if he doesn't have the funds to do all this, it's got to come from somewhere. So it came from Chantal. Place, rearranged things. <clears throat> uh, he did purchase a larger bed as he had a very small bed before. He got me some Bath and Body Works candles because I did say that I, I really enjoyed those. And no matter where you live, you light a three wick Bath and Body Works candle and it feels homey. <laughs> You know what the funny part about that is? Didn't she say before she hates three wick candles? She raged about that, then all of a sudden she loves them. So he went out of his way just to like do little things like that that would make me comfortable. So just little things like that. 
you will notice in a lot of the pictures there's a lot of red light <laughs> I guess just for mood setting we really like to, to have that light on most of the time instead of the yellow light which we have mostly here so even though the apartment was small it was quite charming I'm used to living in smaller apartments I've lived in small apartments for most of my life and okay gotta stop it right here because I want to bring something up that happened long ago when Pete and Chantal were looking for a place, Pete was working at the time and he wanted to find a reasonable place. He wanted to find a small place within his budget. And so they went looking for places. And Foodie said to Pete, of all the places that they were looking at, she didn't want to live in them because in her words, she didn't want to live in a dump. She did not want to live in a small place. Because as I mentioned, when it comes to Chantal, everything has to be grandiose. Whether it's where she lives or what she eats or the lies she tells, everything has to be bigger than it is, as big as possible. Remember her talking about the place she was going to move into? She couldn't just say it was a house. No, she said it was a mansion. And she went on and on and on about it being a mansion. You don't need a mansion to be happy, foodie. A regular house is fine. There's nothing shameful about a regular house, but a regular house just won't do with Chantal. It has to be a big house. And if she goes out with a guy, he has to look like an Instagram model. Like I said, everything has to be grandiose with this one because she, she's a narcissist. She's got an ego and she always wants to feel like she's better than everybody else. If you're living in a house, she wants to live in a mansion. You got a, a, a normal husband, she wants something better than that. She has to be one step above everybody else. And to me, the size of the apartment is not important. Yes, it is. The size of his heart. Okay, that was super cheesy, but it's true. I didn't come to Kuwait for an apartment. I came to Kuwait to be with my husband. You came to Kuwait to live out a fantasy. I've always said that I think this thing between her and Sala, it's role play. This is her personal fantasy. You know, she wanted to know what it was like to be near a good looking guy that would hold her hand and say nice things to her and act like a gentleman. She paid for it. She got it. She wanted to live out some sort of fantasy with this dude. And so she arranged it all. They got in touch with each other and she told him, hey, I got the money. All you got to do is fake love me and pretend to be nice to me and I'll pay you well. And so she has. But there's no real love here. There's no real connection. We all know that. We can tell by looking at the both of them, he's not into her. He's into her money. He's into what is in her pocket that she can give him. But in the two months she's been in Kuwait, she's done some damage to him. Like his friends, his family can't stand her. There's been a rift between him and Allah. Someone that's been friends with Sala. And you know what? Let's talk about accountability for a second. Part of that is Sala's fault. If you want my opinion, I think Sala, he's not quite the angel he makes himself out to be. I think maybe on a small scale, he's a bit of a scammer. And he met up with Foodie, who is an even bigger scammer. And so you got two scammers scamming each other. But what Sala fails to realize is how severe this one is, how extreme she is. And she has a history of running through people. She'll meet up with you. She'll size you up. She will lie to you. She will manip manipulate you. She will do damage to your life. And then once she has everything she wants out of you or everything that she can get out of you, she'll leave you behind like garbage. And she wonders why she's alone. And make travel plans. <clears throat> develop our couples channel and just keep working. Yeah, that's something I've noticed. Let's talk about that for a second. The couples channel, her main channel and his gaming channel. 
notice that everything that's happened revolves around things that benefit her. The couple's channel benefits her. She gets the money. The main channel, she makes money off of that. His gaming channel, has anything really happened with that? Because I haven't heard anything. Sala, that's your gaming channel. That is for you. You haven't done any gaming content on that because Chantal keeps you focused on doing content for her. She's making all the money. So when she's gone, how does that benefit you? It really doesn't. There's nothing that has happened that benefits you and only you directly, Sala. It's been all about pay attention to me and do things that benefit me. That is the Chantal way. I know you have a channel. I know you could be doing gaming content and building that up, but put, put that aside and just focus on me. And when she leaves, he's going to be back at square one and worse. He's got to repair relationships with family and friends that have been damaged since she's been there. So I need to regain focus and work on those things. I was very, very happy that first night of being there. I remember um, walking up to the building and there were a lot of stray cats around and I just thought, oh my gosh, I want all the cats. <laughs> there was no, and I'm glad. No, you've got two cats at home you're not taking care of. You don't need more. You don't even need Harry the hamster. It was like a mama cat and she was hiding out under some palm trees out front of the building and with her kittens and it was just the cutest thing. I, rem I kind of miss the old street we used to live on in Salmia. There was, when you come up the highway, our place wasn't far away from there and there were a few restaurants and like little shops you know i'm just going to point this out <clears throat> and forgive me if i keep clearing my throat out y'all i know it's irritating i'm so sorry you guys know that i did have covid i had that x88 uh omicron var variant and i've still got a little bit of it that's why i keep clearing my throat uh but notice notice here the title, Our Old Apartment Story Time. This is the word we're looking for, story time. Y'all think, what is a story? A story could be completely true or partially true or not true at all. So she could be just making up stories just to have content. Keep that in mind whenever you're watching Chantal. She has said this is her story. And she's doing a story time. So parts of it could be true, but other parts aren't necessarily true. And that's especially true since she's a liar. She, you know, she's just making up stuff to give us content so she makes money. That's it. Just like a few restaurants that were open late selling like falafel and quesadillas and things like that, mixture of sandwiches and fast foods. And then there was like a little mini grocery store type of thing that are pretty common here. Um, little markets that have like toys and drinks and whatever else. And then you, we would park in this big parking lot. And, and something that's really interesting about here is you can pay extra wherever you live to have some guy wash your car every day. So they just like take, you know, a rag and wash off all the cars. Um, if you that pay them too, because overnight even like your car will get full of sand and like dusty. So I found that very interesting. <laughs> so yeah, that apartment, I know it doesn't look like much to most. There were a lot of good memories made there. So what good memories you were raging half the time. You were raging half the time. What do you mean? Question as someone that I am a former binge eater. Watching you, and you are currently a binge eater because your ED is still active and out of control. What do you mean good memories? Because all the apartment stuff that you showed us over there, girl, you were binge eating. You had two boxes full of food. Your binge boxes, 
girl, I see you. I see you all the way over here. Hello, binge boxes. You were binge eating. What do you do when you're binge eating? You're upset. And you've been raging ever since you got to Kuwait. The irony of it all. You say that I'm in Kuwait and I'm doing it to be more positive and I want to be in a better state of mind. I'm self-reflecting, blah, blah, blah. But yet since you've been in Kuwait, you've been angry. You've been raging. You've been binging and gaining more weight. What do you mean? A lot of good memories. If there were good memories, we didn't hear about them. You were mad all the time. You're still mad. And you're mad because you're miserable. The binge eating has not stopped. It has not slowed down. You get online, you get on YouTube, you're talking about the reacting reaction channels. You're angry. You get on Twitch, you're angry. There doesn't seem to be much happiness over there for you. Oh, that's what's important. And we had a really good time. When I first got here, the weather was a bit warmer. It's been pretty cool. It's been like six, seven degrees Celsius here lately. It's winter time here. I never expected it to be this cool here, but when I first got here, we would go a lot to beaches and be out anyways with friends and family, having barbecues and just, like I said, going to the beaches, going camping. This is part of her story time. See what I say, that part of this, story time might be true and then she mixes in things that aren't true foodie tell the truth you haven't gone out much and done much while you've been in kuwait you've done some couple vlogs but we all know we know that the way you did it was you and sala would go out and you'd film a bunch of footage and then you take the footage and you split it up in a different videos to make it seem like you were doing more than what you were doing. And you also did that to throw off the reactors, to throw off the reaction channels, because you know we pay attention to detail. The devil is in the details. You know we pay attention. And you would split up the vlogs and you would mix up the footage to confuse us all so we couldn't pay attention to certain things. Although we did, and you got busted anyway. So you're not doing a lot. You might go out one day, film a bunch of footage, break it up in like six or seven videos. Okay, you're not that active. If you were out walking more, you'd be losing weight like crazy. You would, if you cut down on your calorie intake, cut out all those doggone carbs, because you don't need that much, girl. You're not a lumberjack. You don't need that much in the way of carbs. You're carb loading. You're still eating the cheese. You're still drinking the soda. If you were even half as active as you portray yourself out to be, you'd be losing weight like nobody's business. But the fact that you are gaining more weight is because you're not active and you're taking in more calories than what your body can use. Doing all this other stuff, going out, making vlogs. By the way, we have an entire couples channel where we did a lot of things. You can see the entire journey over there. I do have some videos here about my journey coming to Kuwait as well, if you want to check those out. So yeah, back to my story. <laughs> back to my lies. Okay. Uh, whenever I first got to the apartment <clears throat> and I remember walking in and just feeling almost right at home right away. It was really hot outside that evening and so the ac was blaring it was so cute like just little things like that to make me comfortable he would do like put the ac down to 22 even though he likes it on 25. so things like that just to make me comfortable and feel welcome and so we just pretty much stayed in bed and watched movies oh my god here we go we just stayed in bed i don't believe that i don't believe it and talked and got to know each other and fall more deeply in love with each other and okay you know what i'm gonna call her out on something booty you're supposed to be a newlywed woman i've been married twice twice 
divorced twice, but I was married twice. So I've worn the ring more than once. And no shade at all to anyone who hasn't been married yet, that you're still single. Being single is sometimes the smartest choice. You know, you have your freedom and all that. You know, props to all the single people that are still single. But, foodie, I can't think of a single married woman that I know and that I talk to that one of the wedding gifts that the husband gave their wife was 2,000 video games. <laughs> you didn't get roses. You didn't get a nice dress or anything like that. You got 2,000 video games. You know what that tells me? It tells me that he's not that interested in you. He's giving you something to occupy your time so he doesn't have to deal with you. But seriously, you're newly married and your husband gives you 2,000 video games? I can understand that more if you were a serious hardcore gamer. That'd be an awesome gift later on. But your husband giving you 2,000 video games? Girl, pathetic. And just spend a lot of more intimate time together as husband and wife. One thing I really love about Kuwait is how hospitable and friendly the neighbors are. We had some really nice neighbors. It was a Syrian man and his wife was from Egypt. And we just, uh, they would invite us over. And she's the one who would randomly bring us um, the the puddings and the olives and just food that she would make like roasted corn and sweet potatoes. And we went over one evening, I uh, remember, and we just sat there and talked and she made us like banana smoothie and some corn. You know, I, Foodie talks about how hospitable everybody has been to her there. And the picture that I saw that Allah saw this friend provided the one that we saw when she was in Allah's house. Fudi was sitting on their couch and Allah or Mrs. Allah, they actually cared enough about Fudi that they propped a bunch of pillows behind her so she could sit up and eat with them. And because I did not see Mrs. Allah on the couch with Sala, with Allah, I would imagine that Mrs. Allah sat on the floor just so Chantal could sit on the couch. Footy talks about how hospitable everybody is over there. And I believe it. I believe a lot of people have been very, very nice and understanding of Footy. But Footy, you know what I don't hear from you is what you've done in return. Have you cooked anybody a meal over there? Have you spent any time with anybody over there just doing things to be nice? Even during the camping trip, what you do? What did you do? You didn't help the women clean up. You showed up at the campsite with just soda for yourself. You ate before everybody else. And then when it came time to clean up, despite the fact that you didn't bring any food and you ate everybody else's food, you didn't even have the gumption to get up and help people clean up. You let them do the cleaning up and you went into a tent and you pouted with your phone saying, I have a migraine, I can't help them. And then before everybody woke up, you took the snacks, you took the water, you took the tissues and you bolted. How horrible of you. You go to another country and you receive everybody else's hospitality, but yet you can't even be polite in return. You didn't cook for anyone. You didn't do anything. You just let everybody else wait on you. You suck. And just, just some delicious, healthy things. And it was just really nice. I do find it a bit difficult because I don't speak any Arabic. And so, so what? So what? So what? You can't speak the language. You don't have to be able, have to speak someone's language to be polite, to cook a meal. And even if you don't know how to speak Arabic, Allah does. So if you wanted to do something for somebody else, you could ask him to translate if you can't say something properly. There are ways to be polite 
and hospitable to other people, but you didn't bother. You just let everybody else be kind to you and you weren't kind to anybody else. You rude, selfish, self-centered creature. Oh, I mean, I didn't, couldn't really say much in the way of anything. I pretty much had to use my translator, so a lot. Google Translate is a savior. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit, about our first place. Like I said, I know I needed a lot of privacy. We're going to be opening up a little bit more as we feel comfortable. There are a lot of things we do want to keep private in our life. I just feel that it is healthier in a lot of ways, especially in a healthy relationship. You know, when Foodie says she needs privacy, you know what that makes me think of? What that, it, the, the arrow that points in a certain direction? That there's some shady shit going on behind the scenes and that's what they want to be private about. It isn't about keeping things private that are too personal. It's all about there's some shady shit going on in the background that they can't talk about. And they got to keep it quiet because they don't want whatever it is they got going on to be blown open and then get ruined. That's what it looks like to me. If you want to keep it that way. But some things will all be revealed in due time. There's also a lot of information being demanded from us that we just don't feel that we owe people. So a lot of things will just remain private. But I wanted to share this story with you a little bit and talk about, you know, just the fondness I feel when I think about the old place because it was our first time being together as husband and wife and just the little efforts that Sala put into it to make me feel welcome made all the difference and made it a really special little place for us. So that was our place in uh, Salmia area and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this story. And if you did, of course, please thumbs up this video. No, I did not enjoy your lives. I never enjoy your lies. And that's what your stories are, is mostly lies. Like the lies that you're telling everybody right now. Oh, everything he's done for me. Translation, everything I paid him to do. Everything I sent him the money for. That's what you mean. Because yes, you did send him $9,000 in Canadian money. But if you break it down, because the dinar, which is the currency over there, the dinar is stronger and valued more than the Canadian dollar. 9,000 Canadian dollars translates roughly to $2,200 in the dinar. So really, you lost a lot of money sending it to Allah, to Sala. All he got was 2,200 bucks. So it's not a surprise to me that if that's all he got that you sent to him, why He's in a place that's kind of on the small side because, you know, something 2200 bucks is not going to get you a lot in the Middle East. No shade on anyone who has a small place over there. I'm just saying 2200 bucks, I'm sure, is not going to get a really big, large place or a mansion. It's going to get you the bare basics. Video. I don't usually ask for a thumbs up, but I'm going to start acting more like a YouTuber. So... I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate your positive comments. Please leave me some. Well, I'm not going to give you a thumbs up, but I'll give you a middle finger up. How's that? Is that good enough? No? Too bad. And I will like and reply. So anyways, guys, I hope you have a blessed day and masalama bye. Okay, so that was the apartment story time. As you can see, there wasn't a whole lot of information given. It was just Chantal letting out little bits and pieces and peppering the rest with just made up stuff that nobody cares about, which is the usual Chantal way. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this react video. If you have, please like it, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. And oh, before I forget, you know, I've got something planned for you, Chantal. You're not going to like it. You're not going to like it, but I'll shut my mouth about it. But it's just to give you guys a little, you know, clue about what I'm up to. I'm going to do a little compilation video showing the fall of Foodie Beauty. How 
the person became the character because that's all she is now as a character. The person, the actual person, Foodie Butte, uh, person, Chantal Marie, no longer exists. We're looking at a person who used to be a person and now it's simply a YouTube character. But you'll see the video for that later. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here and have a good one. Bye-bye.